Today we're going to show you how to install a subsurface drip irrigation system under turf. This system is the most efficient way to water a turf grass area and helps to eliminate the typical problems associated with sprinkler systems such as runoff, overspray, evaporation, and wind drift, which can all be harmful to your landscape. The first step is preparing for installation. Let's get started. Before starting any kind of digging, be sure you know what's underneath the areas to be dug up. In most areas, calling 811 will get you to the right folks who can come out and mark the location of utility lines on your property, as shown in this clip. You can also call the local utility to have them come out. Be sure to call cable, water sewer storm, gas, phone, and electric. Now that you know where to safely dig, you're going to need a few tools. For this particular installation, we need the following. 100 foot tape measure, marking string, marking flags, marking paint, rotary trencher found at an equipment rental facility near you, a small vibratory plow also works well for these installations, trenching shovel, rake, pipe cutter, 800 feet of Duraflow CV tubing with 0.9 gallons per hour emitters and 12 inch spacing, necessary 17 millimeter fittings to complete installation. This will be a combination of tees, elbows, and couplers. The amount of these will vary by installation. We recommend using the Agrifim Smart Lock fittings. Properly sized PVC for header pipe. Follow manufacturer recommendations. PVC tees for lateral line connections. Two flush valves. And valve boxes for drip filter, 10 inch round, and flush valves, 7 inch round. In order to determine your flow rate and spacing, you need to take the following steps. Firstly, you need to call your local location services hotline to have utility lines marked. You want to ensure that you don't disturb these lines during installation. Next, you'll need to take a soil sample from the installation area in order to figure out your soil type. The type of soil will help determine the emitter flow rate. Click here for more information about determining your soil type. Third, you have to measure the size of the turf grass area to be watered. This will help you determine how much dripper line is required for the job. Lastly, you have to examine the water supply. This will help you figure out two things, your water flow rate in gallons per minute and the pressure available for the installation. For more information on how to determine your flow rate and pressure, click here. For this example, the soil type was determined to be sand. The size of the turf area was 750 square feet and the flow and pressure of the water source was 37 gallons per minute at 58 PSI. This information will be used to determine emitter flow rate, spacing, and the total feet of tubing necessary. The drip line emitter flow rate, spacing, and lateral spacing is determined based on your soil type. This residence has sandy soil. Using this chart, it was determined to use 0.9 gallons per hour emitters spaced at 12 inches with a lateral spacing of 12 inches. To determine the total feet of tubing necessary, we will use this equation. Take the area of your turf grass and multiply it by 12 inches. Then you take that number and divide it by the lateral spacing to get the total feet of tubing. For this residence, the area of the turf grass is 750 square feet and the lateral spacing in inches is 12, which equals 750 total feet of tubing. Next, we need to calculate zone flow. Zone flow is used in conjunction with your water source capability to help size your irrigation valve, drip filter, and regulator. Total zone flow equals the total feet of tubing times the flow per 100 feet divided by 100. To figure out your flow per 100 feet, reference this chart. For this example, the flow is based on 0.9 gallons per hour at 12 inch spacing, which equals 1.5 gallons per minute. The total zone flow for this particular residence is 750 feet multiplied by 1.5 gallons per minute, divided by 100, which is 11.25 gallons per minute. Based on this residence's total zone flow of 11.25 gallons per minute and the water source capability of 37 gallons per minute at 58 PSI, it was determined to use a 1-inch control valve and Agrifim's pressure-regulating Y-filter. Now that you've made all of your necessary measurements and calculations, you're ready to lay out your system. Trench the supply header location. Using the tape measure and marking flags, mark 12-inch lateral spacing along both ends of the turf zone. 
Place the perimeter lines four to six inches away from hardscapes and planting bed lines. Use marking string between marking flags to create parallel lateral lines across the turf area. Use marking paint along the marking string to mark the location of the lateral lines on the turf. Once you've marked where the lateral lines are to be installed, you can begin trenching. As with any power tool, you must read and understand the manufacturer's operation instructions prior to using the equipment. Using the painted marking lines on the turf, line up the trencher and follow the painted lines across the turf area. Make sure to orient the trencher so that the excess dirt from the trench does not fall into previously trenched lines. It's also very important that the trenches are all cut to the same depth, which should be four to six inches below final grade. Cut trenches in the turf grass along the painted lines and continue them as close to the endpoints of the area as possible. Use your trenching shovel to complete the cuts in the turf to the end points of the zone. Once the trenches have been dug, it's time to place the drip line. Starting at one end of the zone, lay out the drip line on the bottom of the trench. Use the soil excavated during trenching to backfill on top of the tubing as you go. When you reach the end of the area, cut the tubing. Ensure you leave at least 6 to 12 inches of excess tubing to allow for connection to the header pipe locations. Choose a location for the filter that is easy to access to allow for periodic cleaning and servicing. Install the filter, making sure to orient it in the direction you intend the water to flow. Lastly, connect the PVC header pipe to the filter. Use properly sized PVC pipe to construct the header along the supply side of the drip line zone. Measure and cut pipe to length and install service tees at the proper locations for the lateral drip lines. Wrap Teflon tape around the threads of the 17 mm adapters and install them into each service tee. Cut the lateral lines to the proper length and connect the tubing to the barbed portion of the fittings. Make sure the tubing goes completely over the second barb and rests at the stop point on the fitting to ensure a leak-free connection. Install a PVC ball valve at the furthest point on the header from the valve for a flush point. This should be placed in a round valve box with a 6-inch gravel sump underneath for proper draining during flushing. Use the same drip line tubing with the same flow rate and spacing to connect the lateral lines on the end of the zone opposite the header pipe. Cut pieces of tubing to length to connect the laterals maintaining the intended spacing between them. Make sure there's an emitter outlet on this piece of tubing that connects the lateral lines together. Use 17 mm insert fittings to make the connections, making sure the tubing goes over both barbs on all sides of the fittings. This will ensure leak-free connections. We recommend using the Agrifim Smart Lock fittings. It is also necessary to place these connections at the same depth as the lateral lines. Place a flush point at the end of each header at the furthest point from the water source. This should be placed in a round valve box with a 6-inch gravel sump underneath for proper drainage during flushing. Now that the lateral lines and header pipes have been installed, it's time to backfill the trenches. Carefully backfill and compact the soil around the headers and flush valves using the dirt that was removed while digging the trench. Remove any dirt that may have fallen into the valve boxes and replace the grass and any other plants that were removed during the digging process. Rake the excess soil across the turf grass to restore the original grade. So there you have it. This may seem like a lot of digging, but a subsurface dripline irrigation system will save you both time and money and will give you the highest efficiency possible for your turf grass irrigation. This particular installation has resulted in a 60% water savings cost compared to the surrounding properties in the development. In addition, the delivery of water directly to the root zone has resulted in the healthiest, best looking yard in the neighborhood. For more information on this and other Agrifim drip irrigation products, check out our other videos. For more than 30 years, NDS has been a leader in water management solutions for the residential and commercial markets. For more information on our other drip irrigation solutions and special offers, go to ndspro.com.